Hi, everybody that's joining our Zoom class on YouTube. We are painting koi fish on rice paper using India ink for background today. I pulled this picture up off the internet and I like it, the two koi fish with the beautiful fins. And there's only two koi fish. And generally, there's a rule that you should paint three Zs, but this works because of the shape of the fish. Like uh, Penny said earlier, the yin and the yang. Here's a sample painting that I did last night, just uh, tracing it freehand. But this one here, I ran off of my computer and then I put a piece of yeah. carbon paper, good old fashioned carbon paper or non water soluble tracing paper. And I traced it with a pencil. And I have a very light drawing right there. And I'm going to start with the orange. Can you? And then I'm going to use ink and uh, paint the background black. I wore black today because whenever I use ink, I always get it on my clothes. So I hope you have your painting clothes on, you guys. Amen. All right. So the color of koi fish can be red, orange, yellow, black. And there really isn't a right or wrong color. On the one that I did last night, I mixed that with permanent rose and Hansa yellow medium to get the orange. But you could also just use any red that you have in your palette. I think I will today go ahead and use the same colors I used yesterday. So a lot of permanent rose. And I'm using my favorite brush. I tried to look up this brush to order it for everybody, but I had to buy a thousand four hundred. <laughs> what does it say on the brush? Well, this one says the something that I can't read anymore. The something gallery. Hmm. But I have them. I have about five or six from all over the world. And now people, and I think Nina, did you bring us some? I think so. I got one at the De Young and liked it so much. I bought a whole bunch. Yeah. <laughs> they were only a couple dollars. Yeah. They're very inexpensive at art galleries. Is it a 12? Well, I don't, it doesn't have a number on it. I think it's close to an eight or a 10. Quite fluffy. I'm going to go a little more yellow with this. There we go, orange. That's kind of the color of koi fish right there. All right, so I'm going to just paint in the, the colored part of the koi fish now. Right onto this rice paper that is from Henry's mother. This one's not from Evelyn. And wherever my, there's fins or white koi fish or eyeballs or any of that, I'm gonna leave, I'm not, I'm gonna leave the paper. So it's kind of interesting just that the fibers are not uh, catching the color as well. Just, you know, something kind of different here. As well as what? How'd you make that orange again? I'm sorry. The orange is permanent rose and hands a yellow medium. Oh, yellow. Or bumblebee. Okay, thank you. And what I, so uh, most of the paper, the colors um, going nice and dark, but some of these fibers, it's just not, the fibers aren't taking the paint. So you can still see those fibers. And I think that's kind of neat.
So I'm just painting the orange part and not the white part. I'm leaving and just Let's going see, orange. Where's my orange? Orange. Orange or red. If you have a yellow bathroom, you can even make these yellow. So there is the shape of that first fish. Now you said you pulled this off the internet. What kind of a site would you go to? I just go to koi fish and then images. Okay. And if I don't get what I want with that, I go koi fish paintings, watercolor painting, images. I always work, I always look at images. I can send you the link. Maybe if I can find it. This one's actually seems like it's more yellow, more yellow in it. So the second fish is a like slightly different color. So I'm gonna change the color a little bit. I don't like that one. Where the fish is white, I'm not painting orange on that part. <laughs> that seems really obvious, huh? <laughs> so I'm leaving the white part of the fish and the fins. Those beautiful, beautiful fins. Now I have those, my orange <clears throat> parts of my fish right now are very, the paint is very uniform except for the fibers, kind of picking up, which maybe is enough variation. But I was gonna add a little bit, this is actually um, Conacridone, gosh. <coughs> I think I'm going to add perlene maroon to it a little bit. Yeah, perlene maroon to that, just to kind of put a shadow on this side of my koi fish here on this side. So there's a backbone that you can kind of see. So I just darkened out there. I'll, I'll darken here a little bit, maybe right here. I'm putting just putting another coat of paint with a little bit of perlene maroon into my petal so that I can su suggest that there's a lighter side and a darker side around the spines. So that's, that's that change. I, I just added another layer in certain spots. That's about all I'm going to do with this brush. I'm going to rinse it out and leave it. That's all the painting I'm going to do out of my palette. If you do not have black ink and you're going to mix your own ink, your own uh, paint, the paints that you're going to mix are sepia and indigo to make a nice black, which is what I used on this painting last night. But for this painting I'm doing today, I'm going to use ink. So here's my ink. I'm just going to close this and get it out of the way. Oh, so you can see it there better. Okay. Okay, so here's my little bottle of ink. I'm not using that brush that I like so much because I don't think it's ever going to come clean. 
So I'm going to just, I'm going to use this a lot. I'm going to cover in all the rest of the paper that isn't white, just all the black part of this paper. So it's nice and dark, just like that. I'm going to go around all the fins. And just fill it in solid. So now it's just kind of a, like a lot of painting. There's some bit of bleeding from the ink and the paint. It kind of just keeps seeping. And I'm just not going to worry about that. This. Mm. Now, this ink is going to go, is going through the paper onto my board. And if I flick it, it's going to land on my clothes. Mm -hmm. I just painted a thin black. Can't fix it, huh? What happened, Penny? I painted over one of the fins. Yep, you just lost a fin. I, uh, the one I painted yesterday has one less fan. <laughs> Somewhat tedious. I think I'm going to pause the recording so poor YouTube people don't have to watch me. So I've painted all around the edges and around the fins and I'm just finishing up right here around the mouth of this fish here. And I'm trying to leave just the littlest whiskers. So I left a whisker and I'm painting around the whisker and this very special fin. Here's the other whisker that you can't get on the, paint on the picture, but I put it in my painting right now. I tried to leave the glint of a whisker. That one kind of went away. And then here's this fin. And here, it's right up. Hmm. To this part. Here. And I managed to go around and leave the whisker and the fin here. So there's the part that is all the ink and the red paint so far. Oh, I can see a little spot here I missed. I'm going to do that right now. Here. These fins overlap. Overlapping is good in a painting. Always want something to overlap. Okay, so there we go. Now what I'm going to do is finish up by putting the shadow and the see-through part into the fins. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to rinse my brush out of, with the ink and then touch my paper towel. And what's left after I did that is hopefully going to be very dilute. I'll try it over here on the fin, that doesn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. 
So mm. it's just dilute, dilute ink. So I'll just paint those places that are, like this has these little fins. Now it's gotten too dilute. So I'm going to add a little more ink. Rinse it out and then try again here. That's about the right amount there. And I'm just painting in now the little uh, areas in the fins that are light black. With the dilute ink. And then this fin here is underneath the overlap of this one. So I'm going to sort of paint like a negative edge around the top fin and use the dilute ink to paint like magic. these little guys in. And then this guy here is painting is magic. Mm -hmm. That guy has that. And then this guy, same thing, he is underneath this little fin that I'm working on right now. It's underneath that fin. So I'm going to paint the loop ink. Oh. <laughs> My brush is kind of separating. Okay, I'm getting that. I like those fins. That's all good. And now I'm going to try to do a little bit on this one. This is almost two. This is two fins here too. That one, which goes underneath that. And then there is a tiny oh. one. This guy. Oops, I, I, I was painting and not looking like cutting, cutting um, fruit up without watching. You got to look where you're painting. <laughs> and the last once little put, bit. Once you've put down some of the paint, if it's too too dark, can you put more water on it when it's on the already on the paper? You can try. Mm -hmm. I haven't. I haven't even tried to lift that. And then the last thing is the eyes. You can barely see the eyes on this, these fish, but there's one that's right here and there's one that's right there. As soon as they kind of twist their heads, you can only see one. So there's an eyeball right here. It's, I'm gonna use dilute ink on it because it's sort of, you can't, it's just not the most obvious eyeball. This 
one over here is a little more obvious. And it is right here. It's an oval shape. It's a round eyeball, but because we're looking down on it, it foreshortens to make an oval shape. And then if you feel like it, you can go in and do more, more work. But I think that's it for me. I'm going to call that good. And I'm going to try to watch my hands because now I have ink all over them. Oh, look at that tail. Very nice. Can you see the detail on the white? I just yeah. did white over. Ah, yeah, smart way to do it. Yeah, it's it's nice. They're very not the big patches, but not the big patches, but there's some real um I don't know if it shows delicate white on the edges of the fins. Yes. Cuz I lost I lost them. Yeah, it does show. It does. And I kind of like how the black seeped into the red. It sort of makes it look three-dimensional like the fish is coming you know, the shape of the fish is three-dimensional. So that's yeah. nice. That's lovely. Can we see what it Thank would you. like if the picture was turned a bit? So the fish were more this way than this way? Twist your fish, Nina. Let's see. My fish? Yeah, twist your painting. Hold it toward you now. Turn it. Now turn it again and again. Go all the way around with it. Oh. And we'll tell you which way we like best. Keep going, not that one. Which one? You like that one? Which I one like, do you like, Terry? I like this one right now. That way. Mm -hmm. Terry likes that way. Okay. I could show mine, Mary Kay. Okay, Vicki. Oh. Okay, D, let me pin you. Okay. <laughs> wow. That, they look good. I like the little bit of harsher white lines on the edges. It looks really good. And I like that white spot on that fish on his head and the way you did their eyes. That, that's really nice. The fins look great. Oh, Penny, it's so good. I love the colors of your fish. They look very, really nice. And I like the shadows of them. I like your fins, your eyeballs. Really nice. I'll just do another one. Yeah, I like them though. I like your dark, your, your really dark ink. I like the light white part around the eyeballs. Your fins do look good. Mm -hmm. And the color looks good. Your shade, your shadowing in your color looks good. The shape of them is good. You could fix it up with just white paint, I think, and do another one. Yeah. Well, I didn't use the... I, I'm just now starting my fins. Good, good Shauna. I keep going, Shauna. Keep being brave. Ooh. Beautiful colors, Chris. Thank you. Yep. Beautiful. Keep going. Show us when you're done. What did you use for the black, Chris? 